Hello my good people, welcome to another episode of Farm with Paul. Here is your number one channel where we talk more about farming and to ensure we enlighten you for our profitable farming and also running your farming as a business. Today I want us to talk on how to check, how to construct and how you can be able to have a standard zero grazing unit. What are some of the characteristics of a good zero grazing unit? What are some of the things that you are able to check so that you can be able to have a cow that will be very comfortable, very productive and also an environment that you can easily work on and be able to produce to the maximum. Follow me as we talk more on the zero grazing unit, some of the things you have to check on and some of the characteristics of a good zero grazing unit. A zero grazing unit is simply defined as a confinement of your dairy cows and where you can be able to, pro to provide all the necessary requirements of a dairy cow, which include determining the what feeds you are going to feed, the amount of water, the total amount of water they are going to drink, and also the comfortability of your cow. So when we talk about a zero grazing unit, it has its advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantages about uh, zero grazing unit is you can be able to determine the production of your cow by ensuring all the parameters are met and also able to control some of the diseases that can be transmitted into your farm. Because in a zero grazing unit, you can be able to install your biosecurity that will prevent diseases and also some of other pests that can invade in your farm. Now, when it comes to a zero grazing unit, you have to know that you are the mother to those cows, meaning all the balanced diet for maximum production must be provided to that cow. And also the comfortability of your cow must be met and, uh, and also the environmental condition must be perfect for your own cow. When it comes to a zero grazing uh, unit construction, I always advise farmers to use the readily available material in their disposal. Because there are several materials that can be used. One can be said to use the timber as we have done in this cow shed and also can be said to use metal or even poles. But here is determined by the pocket as long as you meet the requirement of a good dairy cow uh, zero grazing unit. Now when it comes to this material, what are some of these characteristics, no matter what material you are using, that will enable you to have a very good characteristic of uh, a zero grazing that will deter, will able to ensure your cow produce the maximum. Follow me as I demonstrate some of the parts of a zero grazing unit that I'm going to show you and demonstrate on the size so that you can be able also to construct your zero grazing unit ensuring ease of standard measurements and also comfortability to your own cows. See you as, as I show you the several parts it contains and the measurements you have to ensure are readily available for comfortability and productivity of your dairy. For constructing a zero grazing unit, you have to select the position that you are going to have your zero grazing unit constructed. And one of the things that before you select the zero grazing unit point, ensure you check on photography, uh, topography of the land to ensure that uh, drainage is well uh, managed during and after the construction of your dairy cow shed. A zero grazing unit has several uh, parts in it which include the feeding area, which is on this side, the playing area, I'm aware the cows do interact, and also the sleeping area. These two, uh, these two points, these three points are very important when it comes to a zero grazing unit, because the feeding area is where you're going to have your balanced feed for your cows and also water. This point is where your cows are going to interact with each other and also exercise, as also express their heat during uh, the heat cycles. Another sleeping area is where your cows will be resting and where we say should rest at least more than 14 hours to be able to maximally produce. So when it comes to a sleeping area, make sure it's as comfortable as possible so that your cows can be able to maximally sleep and be able to uh, digest and produce more milk. When it comes to uh, uh, the playing area, it should be big enough for those cows to be able to interact and at least free air circulation to, pre uh, to prevent what we call the heat stress. When it comes to the feeding area, a cow should be, be able to feed comfortably by its own. This is because different cows produce different amount of milk. And remember, we do feed our cows according to uh, the different things, that is production and the body weight. 
if your cow that is producing more than liter, 30 liters and a cow that is producing 10 liters, those cows will feed differently in terms of the concentrate. Now the feeding area should be well positioned to ensure that all that is met and to ensure your, comf uh, your cow stays comfortably and feeds to the maximum for maximum milk production. Now, what are the measurements that we should check on when constructing a zero grazing unit? We'll start on the sleeping area, then we'll come on the basking area or the interaction area, then on the feeding area. And make sure you don't forget to follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel as we continue. When it comes to a standard zero grazing unit, the sleeping area should have a length of seven feet, a length of seven feet, and a width of four feet. That is a sleeping area for a single cow. That will ensure that even if it's a fraction that is the biggest cow, one of the biggest cows, will be able to occupy this place comfortably and be able to have a comfortable place for production. When it comes to the sleeping uh, ground, it should be raised from the walking area. This to ensure that there is no dirt coming into the sleeping area and actually making your cows dirty. When it comes to the floor of the sleeping area, you can either use the cow mattress to ensure comfortability of your cow or you can use the sawdust. And when you're using a sawdust, ensure it's like a hole whereby you're going to fill the sawdust for proper comfortability. But if you're going to cement, as in the case of these cow sheds, you're going to use the cow mattresses to ensure comfortability and to ensure your cows have no bruises when sleeping and will be able to be very comfortable and produce more milk. When it comes to the playing area or where your cows interact, it should be at least a minimum of 10 feet. That is the minimum for a very good zero grazing unit. And also, make sure that it's well cemented and compacted for proper cleaning and ensuring that your cows are comfortable. This is because here is where your cows will dung and you'll have to collect that dung regularly and also clean to ensure your cow shed is of very good hygiene. Also, this point, it should be very clean and should have a very good circulating air to be able to prevent his stress to your own cows. When it comes to also this point is, it should be slanting a bit and not very steep. Because if you construct a very steep one, what be, which means that your cows will fall and you might cause injuries, which might lead to losses in your farm. So the floor should not be slippery. At least a cow can comfortably walk, a cow can comfortably express itself during a heat cycle and be able to mount on other cows and also ensure that the floor is uh, slanted on one side for easy cleaning and for easy uh, flowing of the urine and water in uh, during the cleaning process. When it comes to the feeding area, the feeding area should be raised from the playing area and also with a width of not less than two feet. And also, if possible, should be a bit slanting in the in, 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 inward to be able uh, to flow the feeds towards the cow. The other thing you should ensure is the pacing from one cow to the other should be enough to accommodate a cow comfortably and be able to feed. And also the feeding area should is a very crucial point because use materials that are easily to clean. This will ensure that no molds will be available in your feed area and also ensure you have fresh feeds to your cow. So easy to clean should be a key factor. Also when it comes to the feeding area is also where we have the, feed, uh, the watering area, which you can also include in your trough area. You can include the water or at the end of your cow sheets. Now, when it comes to the watering area, also consider the same same uh, height uh, and also the same same width as the feeding, uh, as the feeding troughs so that your cows can be comfortable and easily access water. And also ensure it's always roofed to ensure that whenever it rains, your cow, the feeds that you have already uh, given to your cows won't be rained on to avoid even other losses that might, uh, might lead to actually increasing your cost of production. So the other part we are going to talk about more is on the roofing and the height of the roofs. When it comes to the roofing of the sleeping area, 
will make sure that it's at least three meters high. This will ensure that proper circulation of, of air in that sleeping area and to avoid what we call the hysteres. And here is the science behind why we have to raise at least three meters. What we know is, for example, we are having these roofs. What happens is the air on top will always be heat. Uh, we'll always have some heat and we know uh, if you heat the air, what, it, what will happen is it will be less denser. Now, when we have a wind, a slow wind blowing, I'm a cool environment, it will be able to easily eradicate the hot air and it won't be able to get to the cows that are already sleeping on the mats. So it will be very easy to cool your environment and to avoid heat stress to our cows. Because one thing, one of the major problems that I've seen with several farmers is they construct very short cow shed, I'm a zero grazing unit, and that is actually affecting directly heating their cows and actually reducing production. And what happens is the moment you overheat your cows and they are actually all, uh, feeling that the heat is the temperature as are very high, they will tend to consume more water instead of feeding, which will also reflect to high stress and also low production. Anyway, that are the basics of a zero grazing unit. And if you wanted to construct yours, you can actually contact us and we can be able to help. And if you are not able to meet that and you are able to construct at your readily available materials, make sure you meet all those standards. There are things that a zero grazing unit should have is a calf pen and also a labor area, which we are going to talk that on our next video, where we talk on uh, from the laboring, uh, the labor ward whereby our calf is going to calve down and also the, uh, where we are going to keep our calves for the next probably three months. What is the size and what are the good characteristics and the good conditions of that uh, area? See you as we talk more and make sure you don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel and also on TikTok at Farm with Paul and a personal level at Paul Moniki on Facebook.